man, that was a fun close call over here. <laughs> the branch. Forget hail, we got walnuts. You all safe and sound out here? Everybody's doing good. Do you like all this room, Ruben? Maple? Charlotte, y'all gonna be some good friends? You guys doing good in there? Yeah, corn's doing good still. Watch out for that next video. Next week, we're gonna do some corn harvest. Klondike. Whoa! This is not what you want to see. I'm guessing the wind blew this? I'm guessing? I don't know. Oh, the boys. Yeah, I'm sorry, guys. You guys good? All you goats are fit in there, huh? <laughs> Klondike. See, there he is. Lone bell pepper. Are you doing fine? My generator just kicked on. Something just happened. I don't think I'm quite in the safe yet. I'm gonna go inside. It's a little things like that that makes the camera work fun. It's making having a camera and providing content very enjoyable. One of the number one questions I get asked all the time is what is my camera setup? What do I use? What do I recommend for someone who doesn't have a lot of knowledge on how to use a camera or editing software? Prior to YouTube, I have had zero experience with a camera and zero experience with editing software and this past year i have learned four cameras and four editing softwares we're going to take this and we're going to cram it all in and we're going to share with you in the next couple minutes what i would recommend for anybody that wants to step into the world of having a camera there's a lot of cameras out there there's a lot of lenses out there and for a homestead you want something that's gonna be safe, reliable, and not break on you, your investment because a pig or a goat or a cow decides to knock your camera over. And if you've watched me for any length of time, it's all happened right here. So, let's get into it. Ooh. So, let's open up this old bag of stuff I haven't opened in a while. All right, so it's come time for me to depart from this uh, camera gear, but the oldest camera setup I got, which I should say experience with cameras. I have experience with camera gear as far as my cell phone and this GoPro, which I learned a little bit about, which was a GoPro Hero 4 that I took with us, my wife and I, when we went to the uh, Caribbean, and we went to the Virgin Islands, actually, St. Thomas, uh, some time back and I took that with us. That was about my extent with cameras. Cameras can be a scary thing, especially if you don't know a whole lot about them. If you're looking to get into a camera for a, and a YouTube channel, first do this. Start out your YouTube, cha your YouTube channel with a cell phone, okay? I always tell somebody, before you get really into the YouTube world and getting into buying gear, go ahead and start out your channel with a cell phone lens and see if you like it. Because if you don't like it, then you're gonna end up with all this camera gear and you're like, well, I don't wanna use it. Some people, like myself, I can't really stand to watch too much shaky footage or stand to watch too much cell phone where the, the picture goes really blur or it goes really bright and it just goes really dark and it just, it, your eyes get really busy and it gets to the point where you're just like, this is, this is too much for me. You can really get some great video footage with your cell phone. I mean, you can take great footage. You can actually get a gimbal for your phone. There's all kinds of tools to do with your phone. Oh 
only, only way for a grown man to eat a salad. That's fine. You can go ahead and throw your tractor over here. That's cool. See, this is the best place for lighting right now because our power is out. I mean, a generator going, of course, but I got real nice light in here. It's open. It's also the kids' toy room, so we're sharing it. Isn't that right, Mr. Fiend? Do you want to say hello? Come here. Say. No. No? Okay. He doesn't want to say hello. If you look at channels like the Green Haven Farm and Homestead channel, they're a newer channel, but they do all their stuff with their cell phone. It's very good footage. You can see the content is really done well. They take good time and care into how they provide that footage. You look at you know other footages like you know you have um, Will It Grow, um, Homestead Aquarius, uh, um, Ed's. Uh, Crazy as Homestead. You can tell I mean, that they use a lot of cell phone usage in their videos and their editing, and they do a good job with it. Editing software. So iMovie's where I started, but then I got to a point where I started wanting to learn more. If you go into DaVinci Resolve, it has a very good editing software. Um, it's also free. I learned a ton on it between my audio and color effects. Definitely recommend DaVinci Resolve. Um, as a editing software to use. Now, then there goes to Final Cut Pro 10, and that is when you're getting more up on the higher end level of stuff. Final Cut Pro 10, you could get three months free of it, and it's a one time purchase of like 250 bucks, and it's pretty good. It's got a lot of uh, kind of the same working space as iMovie does, but it's a lot more advanced. But where I'm right now, my home right now, and where I will not leave right now, just because I can work efficient and quick is Adobe Premiere. That allows me to do a lot with editing, color grading, effects, and it honestly is my enjoyment. It wouldn't do this if I didn't enjoy it, and I enjoy not being limited. I like to have the roof from my head out of the way and let me fly. It really is a lot of fun and enjoyable, and you can do a lot with it. It's a powerful engine. So, four things I recommend. All right, so the editing software's all the way. Now let's crunch down into it. You are that person. You want to step into the camera world. You want to get into the cameras, but the camera's scary. You're not ready for the whole triangle, the aperture, shutter, ISO, aperture, shutter, ISO. They all three gotta be absolutely right when I'm filming and it changes in every area of different light because I'm outside at different times of the day in different area locate, it can get wild. What I recommend is this little big camera right here. See how small it is? See how nice and light this is? This camera right here, I highly recommend because this camera has got a great autofocus and it's, it runs fantastic in auto mode. So really, you can just turn it on, punch, and go. And that's how I started. I started everything in the auto world. I started to turn it on. It's got a nice little flip out right there. So if you want to vlog, turn it right around, boom. You can talk to it. It's light, so it doesn't really burdensome on the, on the arm. So it really does well. It's got a face tracking. When you buy this camera, this camera runs probably over five to six hundred dollars. Okay, five to six hundred dollars, and truthfully, that's cheaper than most of your cell phones nowadays. However, it comes with your 15 to 35 millimeter lens, the aperture setting 3.5. Um, it will focus close, but you're not going to get that blur background with this specific lens. Most people are like, I want that sweet blur background effect, you know what I mean? And that is usually consists of apertures that are lower than that. So, if you ever want to do that blur background, that's when you get a lens like this. Boom, let's see if it focuses, boom. This lens right here, and there's this little lens right here which runs as an aperture of two. Now I run everything in my camera, everything is run manual. I do not run auto, I don't run my photos on auto. Now I have and I had another lens for this. However, my dad jumped on it because he heard I was selling some camera gear and he bought my vlogging lens. And I'll put the description of that lens down below. And uh, it was perfect for vlogging because I could hold it back and it was wide and really gave me that good blur background effect. And it was great for low light because the, the lower the aperture, the better it is for low light. Now, like I said, it really is the eye of the beholder. It is really about the persons behind the camera. Most people like to say, I don't need that. I don't care about that. And that is fine because you can still create good content with the simplest of items. I wanted to get into cameras. I wanted to get into lenses. I wanted to get into 
better stuff and providing better things and making better footage. Why? Because it was enjoyable to me. One last thing, my audio gear. I have a Rode mic. It's less than $100 for this mic. I set it up. That sucker hears so well. Picks up a lot. I'm going to be upgrading to a new Rode mic down the road here, but right now I got so many things I want to upgrade to between a drone slash a couple new lenses I want to get slash, you know, I got gas. Gas. You know what gas is? Gear accessory syndrome. It's a great starter camera. I recommend it. The Canon M50. You can if you're watching this. Hit a like. Smash that like for me. See you later. Let's go check this right now because I want to take this bad boy for one last ride. Is it safe, is it safe to say that I know that you've been trying? Will it last, will it last the day? I don't know, but we'll be trying. I don't want the pain I don't want the stain to stay On our life I don't want to fade I don't want to fade away From our life Holy moly, look at that. See that blur background effect? That's because I'm using that special lens that gives me that blur effect. Oh, I'm in it? Yes. <laughs> Haven't seen this camera in a while, have you? Oh my gosh, no. Yes. That's, a, that's what started everything. This is where it all started. I'm having a bit of sentiment. This is my last ride with this thing. Take good care.